Good morning once again. Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. We're now moving into a conversation about the former uh, governor of uh, Abia State, Ojuz Okalu, who has asked the court to stop the EFCC from uh, retrying him. It's a 7.1 billion naira fraud that, uh, of course, he has been accused of. Um, earlier in 2019, was sentenced to 12, year, uh, 12 years in jail. Uh, was released five months later, um, of course, with the judge citing some technicalities uh, that um, made um, you know, it necessary for him to be set free. Um, he is now saying that uh, trying him would be a mistake and, of course, uh, speaking about issues like double jeopardy. We've invited this morning Barrister Justice Uhebu, a human rights lawyer, to join us and speak about this. Good morning, sir. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. How are you doing? Oh, well, fantastic. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, I, I want, you know... Yes, yes, yeah, very well. L let's start with talking about his, uh, uh, Oju Zokalu's uh, reasons for... One of the reasons he, he says that he should not be retried. It says that it would uh, result in a double jeopardy. Do you agree with, with that? And does that make a, a lot of sense, seeing uh, the technicalities of this case? Um, well, I don't really uh, think so or subscribe to that because um, I think uh, when the Court of Appeal took a decision on this matter, the court also ordered for a retrial. So you cannot be telling the court to stop the trial on the basis that is double jeopardy. No. Double jeopardy in law is a situation where someone has been tried for an offense and the decision has been taken or the person has already been convicted and the person is already or has already served his job time. You cannot bring that person back again for the same offense that it has been tried and convicted or tried and set free. But this is a situation where he was tried, convicted, he appealed his conviction. And the Court of Appeal looked into the matter and set aside the, the judgment and ordered for a retrial, and which is allowed in law. So asking the courts now to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to stop EFCC from trying him, uh, it, it does not have any legal, legal backing. That is just the truth. Okay, so basically you're saying right now, just, just for clarity's sake, ju double jeopardy is a situation where someone has been convicted and has served his term. But Ojo Zakalu's case doesn't apply because he didn't serve 12 years. He appealed and got off after just a few months. So now that we have that out of the way, we understand that Ojo Zakalu has, you know... Exactly. Okay. We understand that he has interest in the 2023 presidency, so to speak. We've seen Northern youths and so many other groups coming out to say they want him to run for presidency, that he has the leadership acumen, he has the capacity, the dexterity, he has the contact, praising him. But this is somebody who was convicted of a crime of over 7 billion naira theft. I mean, what does this really say about our legal system, about the... Uh, credentials of our political leaders, uh, especially with such a sensitive position as president, when somebody who's been convicted of such, of such fraud can be vying for presidency and have people support him as well? You see, it's not a matter of our legal system. This one has nothing to do with our legal system. Rather, it has something to do with the personality of the person that is involved, one. Two, it also has something to do with the kind of system we find ourselves in the country. First of all, the issue should be, rightly or wrongly, that somebody has been one way or the other indicted or even has been invited to come and give an account or stewardship of you know, your, your administration 
one way or the other when you are in office. And you are trying to look for a way to wriggle out of it. The question should be, this kind of person or this kind of people, are they supposed to be qualified to stand for an elective position in, in the country? Are they supposed to also be qualified to hold a public office in the country? Unfortunately, the problem we're having in Nigeria is the problem of buhaha. People don't want to know what, how you made your money or what you have done. In some other countries where uh, 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 corruption has been criminalized since, uh, uh, since to so and so, it cannot happen. It cannot. Only that we, 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 I don't, we glorify crime in this country. Let me put it that way. We are hero worshippers. And because of this, that is why our politicians will always go out of their way to do any kind of thing they want to do and they don't want to know. And people outside there will still be following them, starting praises, hero worshippers. And tomorrow you want the country to be better, it's not possible. As for me, as for me, if anybody has been indicted one way or the other, or called for questioning one way or the other, to me, your credibility is at stake. Indeed. You, know, you should what, ask for yourself for any public position. Uh, uh, Until you, you're to, we're talking about you dispense with all that. His credibility being at stake. I believe he went back to the Senate after he was released uh, five months, um, you know, after spending five months um, in, in prison. Um, I, I, I want your thoughts on the EFCC's case now. Um, it seemed like they were vi victorious the first time until the technicalities were spotted. Um, but I, I want your thoughts on what might change with your know, retrial. Do you think that they uh, would go back with the same um, uh, facts of the case? Or do you think that they may need to work a little harder to ensure that it doesn't beat the case uh, a second time? Well, uh, from what I have seen, or to my own view, I don't think anything or much will change entirely. Remember, if you have read that judgment or gone through that judgment very well, the major issue there, or the racial dissident died in that matter, was that the judge who sat on that matter and concluded that matter was elevated. And once he was elevated, he was not supposed to come down again to come and deliver judgment. That matter is supposed to have started de novo. His, his conviction was basically reversed because of the fact that the judge who handled that matter had, was elevated. And for that, by rules of court, by the legal system, he was not supposed to come back again and sit on that matter to deliver judgment because he has already been elevated. That matter ought to have started de novo. There are no two ways about it. If he was transferred to another court, but the same court of coordinate jurisdiction is a different matter. It's a different body. But for the fact that he was elevated, he was not supposed to come down again and continue the matter to deliver judgment. That is just the thing. And that was why the court ordered that there should be a retrial. Justice. So that is just the technicality. So the issue of facts, the facts remains the same. Justice Iwewu, I want you to still dwell on this matter a bit because there are many cases like this where it, there's a very serious issue like uh, you know, a crime of about 7 billion naira theft, you know, money laundering. And the, the, the person in question goes off simply because you know, their lawyers are smart enough to raise very frivolous loopholes you know, and they get off with it. Can, can you just highlight how basically lawyers get off their clients on very little, little in very little issues like this while the fact of the case remains and is left unaddressed. And is that something in law that should maybe be checked? No, 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 no. I, no, 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 no. I, I disagree with you. When you say that the lawyers raise very little frivolous whatever, it is not true. Listen to me. The issue there is this. In any criminal matter, 
the prosecution must prove his case beyond reasonable doubt. Once doubt has been created in the mind of the court, or in the eyes of the court, the matter has to be resolved in the favor of the accused. The problem we are having is not made issue of the lawyers. Personally, I see it as issue of the prosecution. The prosecution should be able to do a diligent work while in court. That is why today, if you go to court, especially EFCC matters, you see a charge against one person. You see 100 count charge, 200 count charge, 150 count charge. These things are not necessary. These charges you are bringing up can be looked into just about five count charge or 10. But when you are bringing up to 100, 200 count charge, is it possible for you to prove all of them and sustain all of them? That is the problem. So the prosecution has always failed to prove their case beyond reasonable doubt because it is the duty of the prosecution to prove the guilt of the, of the accused and not the accused to not submit himself and say that he is guilty. So the prosecution must definitely prove that the accused person is guilty of the charge leveled against him. Now, when a lawyer sees any loophole or sees a lacuna, the lawyer will rely on that. You cannot charge me to court that I did something by 12 a.m. And in court, the, 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 the statement will change that it was by 5 p.m. Can you not see that doubt has been corrected? So that is the rule. All right. Uh, the, the EFCC is also requesting that the case be moved to um, uh, Lagos or be transferred to Lagos. You know, how does this in any way you know, affect the, their case and how does that play out? Well, um, I, I can say that for convenience or necessity, let me put it that way. EFCC is a federal establishment that can decide either to do their matter either in Abuja or in Lagos, provided it is federal high court. So the venue does not really matter. As far as I'm concerned, the way I look at it, that does not mean it's going to affect their case, or that does not mean it's going to add um, an advantage to either the, 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 the prosecution or the accused person. No, I see it as a matter of convenience. And how about, you know, cases, because this is from Abia State. This is a case from 2007 while he was governor. Um, how, why, why don't we have this case happening in Abia State? Is, is that, you know, a, a detail that must also be looked into? Yeah, remember that EFCC, like I said, is a federal establishment. They have their office or headquarters in Abuja. They have in, um, in Lagos. I believe by now they must have our office in all the Francis states of the Federation. But be it as it may, like I said, they can decide to institute their matter anywhere. It's the same jurisdiction. Have you asked yourself a question? Why would all these politicians, like in Abia, in Imo, in Enugu, when they want to go to court, they start rushing to Abuja? Is it not the same thing? So it doesn't matter, provided it is the same court, provided the court has jurisdiction to entertain such matter. All right. All right. I just wanted to quickly ask you about the slow arm of the law. If this case has been in court for a very long time now. I mean, prosecution and all of that began as far back as the year 20, 2007. It's 2021 now. We're still talking about retrial. Uh, the, the court adjourning the case to June 7. I mean, why do we have this case repeatedly in the country when we have, you know, the head of, you know, the legal bodies in Nigeria talking about how they're going to make sure that legal processes are hastened up? Well, I, I actually have to say that um, the legal system in, in Nigeria has been somehow slow. Uh, there's no two ways about it. Everybody knows that. But I have to tell you this. As far as I'm concerned, it is a societal problem. It's a societal problem, one. Secondly, I also see it most times that the executive on its own is part of the problem we are having. 
Because a situation or a scenario where cases like this magnitude will be in court and the executive arm will want to interfere with such matters, what do you expect by trying to either influence the judge, influence the court or witnesses and all the rest? But as for me, I believe that we can do better. More especially if we have people who are competent enough to do the job. Secondly, secondly and more important is this. The judiciary in Nigeria must be totally independent. As far as I'm concerned, in, in Nigeria judiciary, our judiciary is not totally independent. Because the judiciary is still under the influence of the executive one way or the other. And like I have said it before, where the president appoints the chief judge, where the governor appoints the judges in the states, where the president appoints the uh, court of appeal president and all the rest. What do you expect? Hmm. So to me, it, it becomes a political appointment. And in Nigeria, you and I know that what you place in this country is the mantra of you who pays the piper, the test the tone. If you remember, in this same country, about a few years ago, that the former leader of APC said that come to APC and your sins will be forgiven. And somehow we see those things play. So it is not a matter of institutions. The problem we have in this country is that the institutions are not working. If the institutions are working, we don't have any problem whether you are a disability, whether you are a legislator, whether you are what. No. If actually we are playing by the rules of equality before the law, everybody should be equal before the law. There's nothing like that. There's not supposed to be anything like VIP. All right. But All right. Yeah, you treat some cases on the basis that this person is a VIP. So what do you expect? It will be politicized. It is politics that is killing our judiciary. Okay. That is just the thing. You have, you have basically way. summed it up saying the you know, judiciary is politicized. He made very salient points, adding that uh, uh, the judiciary basically essentially controlled by the uh, executive arm of government and the fact that we do need processes that to speed up these. Let's have, these you know, one, once, a case come, once a case gets into court, let the prosecution do all their due diligence, have all the evidence, have the facts, make sure that, I mean, if you should get to a point where EFCC, they should have learned a lot from this. If you've done so much work, you know, 2007, to, to be able to, months. exactly, you should be able to have all your facts, all your evidence, to so tie up this case as soon as possible. So so that you know the the you know defendants do not have loopholes like this to capitalize on and store the case for decades and decades on. So thank you very much, uh, Barrister, for your time and thoughts on the breakfast this morning. All right. Thank uh, you. It is my pleasure. There was obviously a delay most yes. of the time we had a conversation with him, but that's uh, what we have for um, Audio Zokalu's case this morning. Coming up next, Wale Scott will be stepping in to, of course, uh, share the very best in uh, sports conversations here on The Breakfast this morning. Stick around.